Welcome back. In today's video, we're going to be talking about what are reproductions and why are some reproductions okay and others not. All right, so what exactly is a reproduction? A reproduction is just that. It is a reproduced figure, weapon, item of an original. Some of those things can come in the form of reproduction car parts. Some can come in the form of prop replicas. And some like these come in the form of toys. Now some people are really, really, really against them. And they go out and they try to teach everyone why they're bad. And some people love them and try to go out and say, eh, it's whatever, you know, don't, don't fight the, let it be. And some people think they're okay and, and not okay. It just depends on what it is. And today we're gonna dive right on into that and look at it for ourselves. So there's different types of reproductions. Reproduction weapons like this. And then there's uh, reproduction figures like this retro collection, Luke Bespin. These weapons can be nice for people who don't care if they want it, but they want something to put up with it. But these weapons can hurt people too. This Java Blaster, I don't know if you can see that on camera, I hope you can, is really, really close to the real one. And people might go, oh, well then display it. Well, the difference is a fake Java Blaster isn't worth that much money, where a real one is. And you go, oh, well it's not about collecting for the money. And you're right. You shouldn't collect something just for the monetary value. But I also don't think you should throw your money away. All these weapons that are loose out front here came into my collection through not realizing what they were, buying online, when I was new in the hobby. So I got into vintage Star Wars collecting when I was 12 years old. And now, a 12 year old, I don't believe, can it be expected to know all the different minute details of what makes something real and what makes something fake. Now you're gonna say, well, that's on you. You shouldn't have been fooled. You should have done better research. And you know, you're right. I didn't do enough research. I didn't know enough. But now that I do, I realize that I lost a lot of money when I was just getting the hobby being scammed. People would say they're real and take advantage of a new collector. And I think that's the problem with reproduction weapons is they're taking advantage of new collectors. Some people sell them as, you know, just that, the reproductions clearly advertised. Other ones aren't. Some people will say they're a reproduction, but they pass all these tests, like the float test, so that people buy them and then can use them to scam people. Some people want to be, you know, super close. Some people want to be distinctly different. Now, if you're someone who collects and you want a reproduction weapon just to have in the hand, and you're going to buy one that doesn't look at all similar, for instance, they'll make some that are in the wrong colors, I'm more sympathetic to you. I personally don't want those in my collection, but if having hand, have a blaster, makes you feel a lot better, and you're wanting to pay a little bit, but not a bunch, and you want that different colored blaster, by all means, that's you, that's your decision, that's your collection. Just like if people want really super accurate ones, I don't agree with it, but if you want that for your collection, that's your collection, that's your decision. Uh, I, I will gladly explain to you why I don't think they're good, but you know, that's for you to make that decision. Now, like I said, new collectors are the ones that get hurt. So when people like me come out and say, reproduction weapons like these are bad, we're looking out for people who, like ourselves that might have been scammed or for people we know that might have been scammed. Now other lines of reproductions, we have the Retro Collection. Now the Retro Collection here I think is unique. Luke Bespin here is one of my favorite vintage figures. I love this outfit. I think Canada did a fantastic job. And I think these figures are going to be a great way to get new people into the hobby. I think if we want this hobby of toy collecting to continue and flourish, especially with Vintage Star Wars, it's about getting new people in. You know, I hate to say it, but a lot of people that collect Vintage Star Wars are older. And as they age and age out of collecting, there's gonna be a gap of collectors unless we focus on gaining new people to this hobby who can appreciate the vintage figures. I myself grew up playing with my dad's hand-me-down figures. That's one of the huge reasons I really love this hobby. These toys might not have been the toys that I went to the store and got, but these are some of the toys that I grew up playing with and I love. Now, Ohio Nerd, you're gonna say, well, then this figure scam someone? Well, yes, it could. The figure itself, at first glance, looks very similar. And I think, you know, yeah, it could get someone. But I think for the most part, with very basic getting into it, you could learn that this figure is a retro figure. Now, the weapons is where I take more issue. These weapons are very accurate. Yeah, they have this little bit of differences. But I don't think to someone who's just getting to the hobby, who's just starting to get into it, will recognize that and wants to keep someone from taking a real figure that I think is way more distinct than this figure and easier to tell than the weapons, putting these weapons with it 
throwing it up on eBay and, you know, charging a premium to that new collector who thinks, oh my God, I'm getting my favorite figure. Oh, and I'm going to get him here. This guy has him a little bit below the market price and I'm getting a deal. I'm so excited. You get it. You know, you get in your collection and you say, you know, maybe a couple months later, as you're gotten more and more into the hobby, because this might've been your favorite figure you want to start out with, you learn about reproductions and spotting them a little bit better than you did before. You realize the weapons are fake. And you said, oh, wow, he got me for a lot of money because as the figures get older and older, the values go up and it gets harder to, you know, collect for people who, you know, don't have huge incomes. And he goes, wow. And he gets so disheartened, they quit collecting. And that's how the hobby could die. And some people say, oh, that would never happen. And maybe that's what you think, and that's for you to decide. Now there's other figures like this. Shadow Trooper here from the Fan Strike Back Sith Lord Collections, or Smith Lord. They do a phenomenal job on their custom figures like this. This figure has great detail. It's a fun figure, but his weapon, you know, is very accurate. I, I, I'm concerned with the weapon personally, but the figures are great. Same with the Tarkin. Great figure from Hasbro to put out. Or another figure that a lot of people, you know, don't seem to mention in this discussion is the Vintage Collection Mail Away Rocket Firing Boba Fett. Now you say, you know, this has a way less issue, I think, because a Rocket Firing Boba Fett, people understand the rarity. And while they might go, oh my lord, it's a Vintage Rocket Firing Boba Fett. I mean, it has a newer year on the leg so that you can tell it's not vintage. As well as, I would really hope anyone paying what you have to pay for a Rocket Firing Boba Fett would have the research to know how to tell and done that work beforehand. And that sellers who are selling that high an item aren't going to be, you know, trying to pass that off. Now, with the reproduction weapons that I think can hurt people, uh, people like the fan strike backs also make reproduction figures of really harder to get figures like Yak Base and Blue Snaggle Tooth. Personally, I, I don't like those. I think it's the same thing. Someone just getting into it could easily be hurt. Put a huge monetary investment into that, being told what it was is real. And it not be real and it sets them back. Maybe that was their budget for the whole, we'll say eight months, we'll say they were on a budget, and you know, a yak face might go for currently, and you might see one for $500 sell, and someone sells one for $400, and you're like, oh man, it's a good deal, but it's not too crazy low to think that, you know, oh, it's fake, and you buy it, and you get it, and you have it up on your shelf, and you take it, you're, one day you're looking at it, because that's your prized possession, you love your yak face. And you're looking at it and you've learned more and more because it's later on you realize you got scammed you spent a whole bunch of your collecting budget on that one figure and it was a scam you got ripped off that's where i think the problem comes and some people go well they're marked well yeah some people mark them and some people don't if you're one of the people who want to have a weapon with your figure and you go i want to buy one that's not a repro it's a reproduction but it's very obvious for instance, some reproductions are made in the wrong color. I've seen tan Han Solo blaster before being sold. I'm more sympathetic to you. Yeah, you might want that fake weapon up there, to, or maybe you want your kids to have the ones to play with. You don't want them to lose the real weapons. More sympathetic. Those aren't gonna get mixed in. I think most people just coming in can learn that Kenan never made a tan Han Solo blaster, for example, or a green one or whatever color it might be that's not you know close to the original. Or if you're gonna 3D print, I've seen 3D prints where the handle of the gun where they hold has a hole so that people can go, oh, well, they didn't do that. And even if you think it's real, you're not gonna pay for a premium for a broken one. So you're not gonna have more, you know, scamming that goes along with it. No matter what your opinion is, I hope you're uh, going about showing your beliefs and ideas in a respectable manner. Rather you hate them, rather you love them, I don't think you should go out and hate on people, bully them, uh, and go to those extremes of some of the things that people have done to people over reproduction figures or anything. This is a hobby that we do for fun. I think it's important to keep that in mind. While you may think these are really evil and hurt the whole hobby, or you think there's nothing wrong with them. I think it's important to be respectable to one another, have that conversation, have that open dialogue, find some common ground, and you know, move the for hobby forward. We're all in this together. We all collect toys because we love them. They bring us joy, they bring other people joy. And I think it's very important to remember that. Some people do a great job with their custom figures, like Hasbro with the Tarkin, or the Reaction Alien. I mean, we, would, we were never gonna get this figure. Kenner was gonna make this. It didn't, because Alien, you know, has a lot of, you know, adult more audience, and Kenner didn't make all the toys. 
we would have never got this figure. It's a great figure. Or, for instance, with the fan strike back, the Shadow Trooper, that's a great figure. It's just like the Tarkin. I love it. Where a figure like Luke Bestman, I think it's good to get people into the hobby, but I think it could cause some problems. Weapons like these, I, I don't see the benefit of. Some people love them. A classic argument for weapons like those is the classic car argument or the prop replica argument. Now, for classic cars, uh, I think it's completely different. If a car is missing a part, it can make the whole car not run. If a figure is missing a gun, it's a toy. Uh, it's not that huge of a deal. It's not going to you know, affect the toy not being able to be played with. It's still a toy. Where if a car, you need that reproduction part to keep those cars on the road, to keep those cars going. Toys are toys. They're, they're not like cars. If you don't have the weapon to your Stormtrooper, you still have a cool Stormtrooper. You just don't have the weapon. Uh, for prop replicas, I think that is a completely different thing where people are building those prop replicas from the ground up and doing extraordinary art, matching those detail for detail. It's so cool. For the toys, uh, they're toys. They, but they are what they are. If you're, you know, if it makes a difference in the figure, I just, I don't see it. I don't see that comparison of the uh, prop replica to a toy. I think the prop replica hobby is a hobby of creating and building and collecting also, but mostly the creating and building of that is like the really cool thing and the showing off of it. Where with toy collecting, it's about collecting. It's not about, you don't go out and create the toy. You don't go out and build the toy. You don't put that artisanship, you personally, into the toy. The toy designers already did that for us. I think that's the difference between the prop replica argument. I think it's important though to remember, these are fun things that can help us grow together and have a great time collecting. No matter what you do, guys, I hope you enjoyed this video. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. Have a great day, and may the Force be with you.